and I went in his vehicle. He backed Patterson up. He was standing right there with his rifle out while Patterson was making the film. Uh, he's the best witness to the film, the best advocate for the film, and he's a very believable man. Tough. And if you meet him in person and sit down and hear about the story, it just takes away all your disbelief. At least it does for 99% of people who meet him. And, you know, what happened as a result of him doing that? Well, until 2003, uh, him being there when the Bigfoot was shot has been nothing but a pain in the ass. He said that his wife almost divorced him. She works as a teller in a bank. She's tired of people coming in, the paparazzi coming in and putting cameras in her face and saying, tell us about your, your hoaxing husband, mm. you know, and this kind of crap. Annoying. Nobody in the hometown believes that the Bigfoot film is real. So those people in their own hometown have all been considered uh, quacks, uh, fakers, hoaxers, and uh, that for the last uh, since 45 years ago. And then in 2003, Gimlin was convinced to come forward, come to a symposium where there were going to be sympathetic people who will listen to his story, will not attack him. Yeah. And not only did he find out that they wouldn't attack him, they wanted to get his autograph. They wanted to hug him. Yeah. So now, here he is, a, a an old man, a cowboy at heart, and he's got the ladies wanting to hug him, and people wanting his autograph, and guys wanting him to go out on Bigfoot hunts with him. He suddenly had a massive following and a, and a social life. To the resurgence of life. That's cool. Yeah, and so he finally started getting credit uh, for what happened. But he still hasn't made any money off it. <laughs> he didn't make any money off the... No. And I'll tell you what, the only, hoax, the only hoax involved with that film, and Gimlin told me this, he said, well, one day I got a call from a friend of mine in Arkansas, and he says, hey Bob, what's going on? I was down at the theater the, yesterday, and, and, and Roger was there, and they were showing your movie that you guys made, and there was some guy on stage with a wig on and said he was Bob Gimlin. And so I jumped up and waved my arms and I said, that's not Bob Gimlin, that's a lie. Yeah. And boy, the, 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 the oh, ushers that. came and carried me out of that place. Huh. So uh, what happened was, Al Diatley, the brother-in-law, the man who put up the money when it came time to market the film, yeah. who had loaned money to Patterson for years, said, aha, now at least we can make some money off this money I've given you, Roger. Yeah. Because uh, he could see the uh, potential in the film. So they started showing the film. But as a businessman, he realized that you don't want to take your profits and cut it three ways when you can do it two. Yeah. So he just decided arbitrarily to cut Bob Gimlin out. Well, Gimlin wasn't part of this deal, Roger. Well, yeah, Al, but you told him that you would reimburse him for all the costs to drive me down there to Willow to, to, to agree, man. Agreed. He never did it. Agreed. Gimlin said that SOB never paid me a penny. And he promised me he'd pay the cost, reimburse me for taking Roger down there. Sad man. So then they turned around and they four walled the film. Four walling is where you hire a hall mm -hmm. and then you advertise and the you show get a crowd there. to come in and show it yourself. And they did it usually in movie theaters, matinee time thing. So during the course of the four walling, they made over $200,000. There's a story of the two of them in a hotel room, Al and Roger, and they've got a garbage can full of $1 bills. Wow. It's, there's just thousands of them. That's cool. Yeah. And so uh, they took the proceeds. Uh, Patterson paid Al back what he had given him and the expense money he was paying to get it promoted. And uh, he said when it's all said and done, he had 75000 clear. Cool. That's good. And he said that Roger was never going to amount to a hell of beans. And he said, you know, Roger and I were two different people. Uh, I'm a money guy. Uh, you know, I watch out for the bottom line. Roger was an artist. Roger was a, he had his head in the clouds. Yeah. He was always going off in some little scheme or some project, thought it was going to be cool and going to make him rich. And none of these projects were going to ever amount to anything. How much money can you make uh, using uh, goats to pull a wagon and sell and have kids ride it for 25 cents a a ride and, and make and be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. He said this kind of stuff Roger did. All he wanted to do was make a living so he could do all his art. And like the Bigfoot. What art did he do? Oh he did he made miniature wagons. He did leather work and made miniature uh, 
uh, stagecoaches that he would sell at craft fairs. He invented uh, a special hook that you put on your ladder if you're an apple picker and he caps your ladder from falling over. Uh, he, little inventions and little scams and little gimmicks. Can I see that book Weird California real quick? Yeah. That's cool, man.